I am so honored and so pleased to be with you here today. My name is Jim McDonough, Ramsey County Commissioner. Uh, Judge Cohen was a long time uh, hero to me, but a guiding light on how to sort through some difficult things in as an elected official. And to always, he always reminded me about keep the people first. So with that, I do want to start off on just some recognitions here. This seven years in the making, this, this started with four people meeting for lunch at Urusel seven years ago, and it's taken us this long. But first off, I want to recognize Howard Ornstein, our North Star on this project. A great friend to Judge Cohen and our North Star right there. Thank you, Howard. Kathy Lantry, I don't believe she's here, but she was city council president when we started this. Kathy is a, was a great friend to Judge Cohen and Kathy, his wife. She was an early believer in the vision and she opened up so many doors for us to be successful here. I want to recognize uh, Jen. Where are you, Jen? Back in, in the back, uh, came on the board on this project early on, helped us thread needles, helped us solve problems. Thank you, Jen, for your work. Jean Kruger, where's Jean? Jean is our, our property manager for Ramsey County, and she was a key problem solver. And she, I just told her, she is a great example when it, demonstrating how important getting to yes is for a project to be successful. Gene, thanks for your work. Marjorie, where are you, Marjorie? Marjorie, stand up. Our artist. <laughs> Our artist right there. She took a community vision and turned it into a reality. And she had many sleepless nights on trying to figure out how to do that with a budget that didn't necessarily always align with that community vision. Marjorie, you did an amazing job. I want to take a moment and recognize the community and so many members are here. I'm not going to name them off. There were members of the committee that have been with us. Um, but you took ownership of this. You believed in Judge Cohen and understood his values and why that legacy why remembering that legacy and reminding the community of that legacy was important. Thank you for the to the community because this is really their vision on recognizing a great man, but more importantly, the values that he inspired as he was a county commissioner, a mayor, and a judge in this community. Um, we had two, two uh, wonderful foundations within our communities, Minnesota, or Bremer, Foundation and the St. Paul Foundation. You're going to hear from Dave later on, but I just wanted to take a moment to recognize those two foundations, but more importantly, we go to them for funding all the time. But in the reality, the foundations are really our conscious of our community, right? They, they, they are about values. They are about taking us some places where we're always not comfortable. They're about challenging us to do better every day and how they participate with the community resources they have. So I just wanted to take a moment. You'll hear from Dave, but Dave, you. Dave, thanks for sticking with us. It's been a long haul. Where are you, Dave? I know you're over here somewhere. There he is, right there. And the St. Paul Foundation was also a part of this. I might get a little emotional on this, thank you, but um, Howard being our North Star, Jen and Marjorie being our guiding lights, the foundations, and Dave sticking with us and being the conscience of our community. But for a project to really come to fruit, fruition that really drives us in the community, you need heart. And that heart came from Kathy Donnelly Conley. Kathy, where are you? Where, stand up, please, Kathy. Kathy. Kathy is the one that brought heart to this project she knew Judge Cohen in ways we'll never know. She was there when he struggled with decision making and trying to figure out what was next. But Kathy, thank you for the heart that you brought to this project. And with that, I am going to call up, uh, and I want to thank our colleagues. And, I, and with that, I'm going to call up uh, Chair Carter, the chair of our board, to say a few remarks. But I know a number of our colleagues are here. Commissioner Mattis Castile, thank you for joining us. And Chair Carter, take it over. 
I just have to say thank you so much first as Jim sits down to Commissioner McDonough because clearly there have been so many who have participated in getting us to this day. I have to tell you that on the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, Commissioner McDonough has been our lead. He has stood up. He has focused over the years and through the trials of getting to this day. So thank you so much to Commissioner McDonough and to all who participated together with us from the various communities that he mentioned. You know, this plaza is such a tribute to judge, mayor, county commissioner, Cohen. And it is such because it is so clear as we look around the plaza that it's not about him. It reflects his wishes, his love, his commitment to all of us. The love that he had and the focus on inclusion and gathering people together for the good of all of us is so clear as we look at all of the symbols that are represented here in this space. Thank you for today, Judge Cohen, for motivating us to follow your example and to create this symbol of space that unites us, that collects us, and that lifts up inspired voices for the benefit of all of us. I do want to say that it is wonderful to be in this space noting that this is the building from which multiple levels of government collaborate and coordinate on behalf of us and knowing that in the spirit of Judge Cohen, all three of those government organizations, the city, the county, and our judges are inspired. We are working together, collaborating as he would want us to, and in the spirit of the outreach that he created. Although our mayor couldn't be here today, in reflecting with him, he and I shared that Judge Cohen lifts up a relationship also that we noted. Elected early, before 40, a central graduate, and just as our current mayor is the first African-American mayor, Judge Cohen was our first Jewish-American mayor. All of those things take us into a future of binding ourselves together. I also want to recognize that although this isn't about the judge, it is on behalf of the judge, we have family members here with us today too who are celebrating together with us. And I just lift up, I had a chance to talk with Scott. Scott, where are you? Amy and Chuck may be here as well. And Sam, I don't think could make it, but perhaps his granddaughter, Samantha, raise your hands in your places. Thank you so very much for sharing Judge Cohen with us. We're blessed to have you with us in the middle of the circle today. Thank you, Jim. And our next speaker is Chris Tolbert, city council member, also a member of the committee. Thank you so much, Chris, for your work. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner Carter. Um, I'm Chris Tolbert, St. Paul City Council member. And on behalf of the city of St. Paul, um, the mayor, and I know my council colleagues, I see council member Jane Prince uh, is joining us as well. Uh, we're honored to be here and for the city of St. Paul to be a part of this a beautiful arts installation and more importantly, the legacy and message that it will uh, bring on to future generations. I can tell you as a lawyer and a former law clerk to a chief judge, it's pretty impressive to see somebody rise up to that level of not only judge, but chief judge. And as an elected official, I can tell you that uh, I have a lot of respect for somebody that can not only get elected to the county board, but can get elected to the city of, mayor of City of St. Paul. To do all three of those positions, the trifecta of everything that goes on in this building is pretty special and pretty unique and should re be recognized in itself. And I can tell you, I didn't know Judge Cohen very well personally, but I knew a lot about him because of my positions. There are a lot of stories riddled in these halls, both in the judiciary, at City Hall, about Judge Cohen, references to Judge Cohen, references to Mayor 
uh, Cohen, and it's fantastic to get to know all those stories. I just learned that he's a Central graduate, which doesn't surprise me. As a fellow Saint Central graduate, I can, I can tell that's had a lot of influence on him. But the thing about Judge Cohen that stood out most to me was that throughout his life, not only did he open doors for people, but he welcomed people in. And he welcomed people in that didn't traditionally have that door open for them, whether it was immigrants, whether it was women, whether it was other members of our community that needed to be welcomed with open arms. And I think that's what this is about. This isn't necessarily about him as a person, but it's about the legacy and example that he set for future leaders, future council members, future county commissioners, future judges, future mayors to continue that legacy. And I think that's the good reminder and the example that should be set every time we walk by here of opening doors for people, of welcoming people, of being inclusive and allowing people to be a part of that. And that's something that I hope everybody at City Hall, everybody on the county board and everybody in the judiciary members. And I think that's what this legacy is about. So thank you for letting the city of St. Paul be a part of this. Thank you to Judge Cohen and Judge Mayor Commissioner Cohen, uh, depending on what day, I suppose, what, what influence, um, <laughs> what year it was. Thank you to his family. Uh, St. Paul's a better place because of his contributions here. So thank you, and I have the great honor of honoring, of introducing Chief Judge Castro. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Leonardo Castro. I'm Chief Judge here in Ramsey County. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and honor to share uh, this tribute to uh, Judge Cohen, Commissioner Cohen, I'm not going to go through all the titles. Uh, I, I also uh, want to recognize my colleagues that are here today. I see uh, numerous colleagues here, Assistant Chief Judge Gruing, uh, Judge Brown, Judge Vulo, Judge Kyle, Judge Guthman, Judge Yang. Did I miss anyone? All right. Well, we got, we got a good uh, representation here, so I'm very, very proud to be uh, part of this uh, celebration. You know, one of the bedrock principles of uh, being a trial judge, or at least a good trial judge, is the requirement of treating all people with dignity and respect. Well, my understanding is that Judge Cohen personified uh, this principle. His measure of a person was a person's heart. He was a listener, and he recognized the strength in engaging the community. He particularly engaged the Hmong community and work with them to enhance their trust in our justice system. This was not a simple task as the Hmong people had suffered mightily under the hands of their government and harbored great distrust. But Judge Cohen was a master at building relationships as we've heard over and over again, but more importantly, he was a master at nourishing those relationships. He was also attuned to what was going on in the community. He saw the need for a system that needed to adopt and accept and wrap their arms around a people that had suffered. And consequently, he was well respected for that by the Hmong leaders. Judge Cohn also understood the importance of educating our immigrants on our new laws. He seized on the community justice concept and trained community members on sentencing circles. This was not an approach that was readily accepted at the time, as many wanted to maintain uh, the status quo. But Judge Cohen understood the importance of bringing people together and finding solutions in a more appropriate cultural setting. Today, this type of community approach is commonplace within our system and we must use this example to continue to engage the community and find culturally appropriate solutions for the conflicts that come to the steps of this courthouse to be resolved. So with that, again, I thank you for this opportunity and this honor uh, to appear before you. And uh, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Silo. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm honored to be here today to remember an exceptional leader. My name is Shia Lo, and the late Judge Cohen was one of my mentors. 
I'm honored here to celebrate the grand opening of his memorial park. I want to take this opportunity to thank many of the Hmong community members that have contributed to this memorial. Thank you for your contribution and your participation. For today would not be possible if you did not do your part. I also want to take this opportunity to recognize two individuals that the judge has also inspired and touched like myself. Today with us, I'm honored to see Judge Sophia Boulot, who is now a member of the bench. And also Judge Adam Yang, who is also here with us, a member of the Ramsey County bench. I met Judge Cohen when I was an interpreter at the Ramsey uh, County Maplewood Court. After I done, after I got done interpreting, he asked he asked me to approach the bench. I thought no one, no judge has asked me this before. I must have done something wrong. <laughs> so I did approach as he asked. And he whispered in my ear, don't tell anyone this, but I thought that for the first time, the defendant understood what I was saying. <laughs> sure, Judge Cohen whispered in my ear, he said, I, this is the first time that I thought the defendant understood what I was saying. And he said, you need to continue to come back to court and help us with this. And so I agreed and I did eventually join the um, Ramsey Courthouse Interpreter Program. And through that work, uh, the judge and I continued to reach out to the Hmong community and immigrants community uh, wanting to develop uh, our relationship with them and to make sure they understand uh, what's going on uh, when they arrive at the courthouse. That was the beginning of our journey with his exceptional leadership. When I became the interpreter coordinator for the Ramsey County Courthouse, a program that he pushed for, we began to work to reach out to as many immigrants community as we could. To Cohen, it was very important that all of the parties that appear before him understood what was going on. Equally important, he also wanted to understand them so that we continue our outreach effort into actually dining and uh, attending all of our uh, events, their events together. He was willing to attend among wedding ceremony into the middle of the night so that he can better understand the agreements between the parties and their extended family. He was willing to attend the New Year's and eat with the Hmong community so that they would know that he cares. He has even learned how to speak a few phrases and greeting in Hmong so that the Hmong parties that appear before him knows that he is committed to do his very best to protect their rights and interests of both parties. He has done many other wonderful and incredible things that time does not allow me to recite at this time. Leaders comes and goes. Great leaders leave behind their marks in stones and monument. But exceptional leaders leave their marks, not in stones and in monuments, but in our hearts and in our, in our minds. 
so was the exceptional leadership of Judge Larry Cohen. And I'm honor honored to have known him, to have been mentored by him, and to celebrate his memorial park today. Thank you. Good morning. My name is John Cooper. Um, I hope you can hear me well enough. Um, welcome all of you at this morning to commemorate Larry Cohen and the artwork that's here. It's been designed on his behalf. I've known Larry Cohen for almost 50 years. Um, I first met him when I was chairman of the American Indian Movement. Met him when uh, we were at the Wounded Knee Trials. And, uh, he was the mayor of St. Paul. And we had a number of people who had visited St. Paul. The elders, the medicine men, the holy men who had come here and didn't have a place to stay. He was uh, the mayor and I visited him and I said, we need some help. And uh, he was kind enough to uh, collect some resources and we found housing and a place to live for the people and food. And uh, we had an old AIM office up on uh, uh, 553 Aurora Avenue, the old Hallie Q Brown Center where we had the AIM office. and. Uh, he was that kind of person. He was always willing to help, and uh, and we uh, did some good things in those days. That was the first engagement that I have with Larry. And uh, another time in 1998, uh, we uh, had an occasion. I had an idea that um, I visited with him when he was the judge, and I said, "Look, we have uh, we have." Uh, Indian people who are we're having a disproportionate number of our children being placed out of home. And I said, and we have lived here 50, 60 years and we have no formal relationship with the county and the Indian community. And uh, we'd like to form some kind of a relationship. Uh, and I said, we don't, we don't communicate very well. And he says, well, look, he says, well, I'll get the county people together and you get the Indian people to come on. And by golly, he says, we'll do something about that. And sure enough, he brought all the, uh, all the people together. And uh, he, uh, he had the county attorney, the uh, social workers, child protection workers, and I brought the Indian organizations together. And we had, uh, we had a room full of people. And today we have uh, a partnership with the American Indian community in Ramsey County, and uh, they, they're working together to reduce the disparities in the Indian, uh, in the Indian uh, child, children being placed out of home. We have the number one uh, disparities in the nation for out of home uh, uh, place, displacement of Indian children. So we're working on it together, and that's the legacy of uh, uh, Larry Cohen, starting that with the Indian community, and we have a formal relationship. We have two committees working on that. One is the Ramsey County and the Indian Community Partnership, and the other one is the Indian Child Welfare Act uh, Advisory Committee. Um, the other thing is, another thing is that uh, we've had lack of uh, trust between the Indian communities over the years, not only with Ramsey County, but throughout the nation because of the, the broken treaties, the, the theft of the Indian land, and uh, uh, the broken treaties. Well, we have um, not worked well with uh, institutions in America. Well. My wife called up Larry Cohen because uh, 
a young Indian man was in jail and his relative had died. And she asked Larry Cohen, she said, can you release this young man so he can attend the funeral? And Larry did. And uh, this young man attended the funeral and he returned on his own. And my wife was very pleased with that action by the judge. And that had built that, because of that, she learned to trust the legal system. And uh, this had built up uh, uh, trust that had been lacking and passed that on to the community. And she felt relieved, respected, and handled with trust. Uh, this was not a, of course, not a custom being treated respectfully in this way. And from people who were in a, from people who were in a role of authority. These are the kinds of things that Larry Cohen has left as a legacy. I don't think we could have these things without the courage, kindness, and generosity of Larry Cohen. Thank you. I miss you, Larry. Well, all I can say in my language is we never say goodbye. Larry, all I can say is, till we meet again, gigawabamin, as we say in our language. And I say to you, shalom. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Debbie Montgomery, former city council member. Uh, I actually worked with Larry. <laughs> uh, it was very interesting. It was just an honor to be there. He was a social justice advocate on everything he did. I mean, he was always inclusive. He opened up the, his office, uh, not only for staff, but for citizens to come into. He was a, an integral part of bringing what St. Paul and what this city is about. As everyone has said previously, um, we're an open door community. And that's what Larry was all about. He worked very hard at that. He always, he always found ways to have a joke. And I say this because at the time I was working for him, I was a city planner. And he'd always call me in his office and ask me, well, Debbie, now what are we working on over here? And I went, Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm assigned over here, Larry. <laughs> and so anyway, I'd have to make sure I had all the information for him when I went in there. But the interesting piece that he did was he was always looking for opportunities for other people. He would seek out, he'd look, he'd get to know you, he'd get to know your heart, and then he'd bring all of those resources together and say, you know what? I think I've got just the right thing for you to do. At that point, he talked me into being the first female St. Paul police officer, which was more than I was looking for. <laughs> but he was always so supportive of checking to make sure how you doing, what's going on, what can we do? How's the police department running? You know, um, is there something that we need to do? And it's interesting when you look at the politics today to then, here's a mayor that's actually engaged with the departments and with the people. And that's something that we have to get back to because that's that connectiveness that makes us a great city. And that was what was Larry was all about. He was a social justice advocate. Uh, I was on several boards with him, with the Urban League and the NAACP. He was always out in the community. He was, as, as she has said, with the Hmong community, with the Native American community, with the African American community. He was reaching out. He was touching. He wanted to know what were the issues when the court systems came up. How do we make sure that we're doing restitution? How are we making sure that voices are heard? How do we make sure that not everyone is being neglected by systems. And having been a county commissioner, a mayor, and a judge, he understood systems. And that's something that helped us to grow as a community and as a city. And I will always be grateful to him. Kathy, I can't say enough about your support throughout being on this committee, Howard. Uh, it was just a great honor to be part of it. 
and I was so honored over the 50 years of my public service to sit and work with a man the caliber of Larry Cohen, and he will be missed, but he's always in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, that was beautiful. My name is Brian Lipschultz, sometimes known as Dave, so uh, that's all right, but my, 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 only my, my closest friends. So, um, uh, On behalf of the Otto Bremer Trust and my co-CEOs and trustees, Charlotte Johnson and Dan Reardon, I am delighted to be with you here today. This plaza and all of the elements you see here are a tremendous tribute to Judge Cohen. He was a trailblazer at promoting diverse and inclusive leadership. And he recognized that the city and region thrive when all voices are heard and represented. The ideals he stood for are as important today as when he first became involved in civic life. This is a fitting recognition for his life's commitment to public service. Our founder, Otto Bremer was committed to these same values and cherished his home of St. Paul and its people just like Judge Cohen did. The life and legacy he built as an immigrant to Minnesota inspired his commitment to the fundamental importance of citizenship, which he broadly defined to include full access to the rights and privileges of our great nation. He emphasized education, communication, and community building in order to honor this commitment through his trust. As his trustees, we are committed to continuing to support resources that honor and educate future generations in our region. Larry Cohen Plaza is an investment in that future right here in our capital city and we thank you very much. Good morning, thank you, Brian. My name is Aki Shibata. To just be here together, I wanna to take one moment to take a one big deep breath. Just help me, I'm very nervous up here. So, ready, inhale. <sighs> Thank you. And once again, my name is Aki Shibata. I'm here to recognize the love the community showed for Judge Larry Cohen. Three years ago, I was asked to join the community of the artist design committee by Marjorie. And at the time, I was very pregnant. And also, I've never seen the public art in this scale. So I was a bit unsure about what could artists like me could join the team to do anything. But first time I met with the team in Marjorie, I was moved by how much the committee cared about Judge Larry Cohen's legacy. I was moved. So I joined the committee and Marjorie brought up three beautiful designs to make this plaza. I loved them all. It was really nice design. And I'm sure Marjorie loved them all too. But the community held so many community conversation Marjorie did. Marjorie decided on the one design, which we can see here today, which is really beautiful. Thank you so much for all of your work. Thank you. <laughs> I can tell Marjorie cared about what community needed to say, as well as the legacy of Judge Larry Cohen. And through the process, that made me think about, oh, maybe this is who Judge Larry Cohen was. I never had an honor to get to meet him, but I was able to learn so much about him. After the process of choosing the design, I was honored to come back in two different ways to this plaza. One was the part of the artist team Carry On Home. We created a temporary um, art installation here in Plaza to talk about who are here. Their Carry On Home project is always about bringing the in uh, in invisible voices, and it's, the project is about immigrants and migrants. 
in second way I was able to come back was I was a co-artist um, coordinator to bring four artists to create the dub chair that shows the peace and community and unity here. And I'm honored to introduce Tomas Alelas, Pana Lor, Gracie Horn, Connor Rice. The artist is all here. And I hope you will spend the time to ask their stories because Marjorie's vision was to bring authentic voices to the dub chairs from different community, just like Judge Larry Cohen was all about listening to other community and bringing authentic voices. So, all right. This has been a precious, precious projects that I have been a part of, and I hope everybody will walk around and talk to each other and learn more about Judge Larry Cohen. Thank you so much.